Okay, with your Internet Explorer open, this is version 7. Uh, most of you will have tools up here if you upgraded from 6. If you did a straight install, your tools is going to be over here. Either way, you want to click on Tools, go to Internet Options, and it's going to open on your General tab, and this is going to list your home page, and you can change that to any, any page you want just by going to the page you want and then click Use Current, and it'll automatically make that page that you're on your default. And in the Browsing History, I'm going to go to Settings, click on Automatically for Check for New Versions of Stored Pages automatically and the recommended uh, disk space is between 50 and 250 megabytes normally 50 is good but if you go to YouTube a lot which you probably do you want to set that at 250 because the videos now are, are a lot bigger than they used to be so set that at 250 uh, you change your history to any number you want I only keep my history for two days click OK and uh, under 7 it gives you a little more options for browsing history click on the delete button it lets you delete your temporary internet files delete your cookies delete your history delete your form data which is your saved information uh, like when you type into something to search and you only have to type the first letter and it will bring up all your uh, pre-entered data that you put in previously you can delete that and you can delete your saved passwords or you can do it with one button and delete all and click close go to security reset all zones to default level if you have Internet Explorer 6 you won't have that option but make sure the internet's highlighted and click on default level highlight local internet click on default level trusted sites click on default level and also you can click on the sites button and it'll show you what sites are listed under the approved sites which I always usually leave mine empty and click on restricted sites hit default level and you can see which sites are restricted and you can also add those here click on the privacy tab click on advanced click on override automatic cookie handling and you want to accept the first party cookies like the cookie that Google gives you or any other website that you sign into and you want to block third-party cookies and click OK you want to have your pop-up blocker turned on you can go into the settings you can add sites here that you want the pop-ups to come up on like um, if you go to the Pogo game site you you want the pop-ups to come in so you would go to that site and then click add it will automatically show up in here. Okay, click on the content tab. This is your content advisor. You click enable and it will give you options for what type of content you want to block. Whether, you know, gambling sites, drug use, alcohol, um, whatever sites have those keywords in them. Um, go to approved sites. You can add sites in here manually. Go to general and you can set up a, a password. So anytime you go to a certain site, it'll ask you for that password to be able to view that site. I'm going to disable mine. It, you can't enable it if you don't put a password in. Okay, autocomplete. That's your settings for autocomplete. You want an autocomplete web addresses by typing in the one, one letter. You can autocomplete forms. This is where you turn it on or off to save your names and passwords for login sites and and you can choose whether you want it to prompt you again for save new passwords. Connections. Um, if you're using broadband connection you shouldn't have anything in here. And if you do, um, click on never dial a connection if you're using broadband. Now, under your local area network settings, you click on the LAN button these should be off and your proxy server should not have a check mark in it unless you're running Avast antivirus then you want to use the proxy server because that goes through Avast before it enters your computer and it has to go through this port 
and that enables AVAS to scan everything that comes in and out of your computer. So if you're using AVAST, put a check mark in the proxy server and type in this address 127.0.0.1 which is the same as local host. And the port that AVAST uses is port 12080 and click OK. I'm going to click on programs. These are the default programs for your HTML editor. Most of these, if, uh, if you're not sure what these are, they're, they're probably fine the way they are. This lets you choose a default internet browser if you have Firefox installed. Um, I turn this off because I want Firefox to be my default browser. And every time I open Internet Explorer, I don't want it to ask me. So I take the check mark off of here. And this is where you manage your add-ons. So this is very important if you're getting a lot of pop-ups and you're having a lot of problems with your internet browsing. This manage add-ons option. We're going to click on manage add-ons button. And what comes up by default is add-ons that have been used by Internet Explorer, not necessarily being used at the moment. But we're going to open that menu and click on add-ons currently loaded in Internet Explorer. All these ones that are listed as helper, um, basically they, you know, they make your PDF documents open a little faster. This one's for Adobe. Windows Live sign-in might load a little bit faster, but in reality it just kind of slows your browser down. So I disable those. Um, diagnose connection problems. I really don't have too many problems with my connections, so I'm going to disable that one. And down here I'm going to click disable. And then it jumps up to the disabled parts. RoboForm I use a lot, so I leave those enabled. Uh, Shockwave Flash Object, I use that for YouTube. See, I don't use this one. And it's not verified. It will uh, tell you what company or publisher made it. And that one's not verified, although I know who that is but I don't use it so I'm going to disable that one also and in the type it shows you that it's a browser helper browser extension toolbar browser helper uh, ActiveX control which this one is actually a flash player for YouTube shockwave flash object so you kind of you might need that um, Sun Micro is the Java I need that so I'm going to leave that enabled. So just go through the list and you can actually disable all of these. If you do need them you'll see a little gold bar show up here at the top saying that you can't display certain content because you need this certain thing enabled and it'll give you the option to re-enable it. So if you disable all these eventually you'll know if you need them or not and you can very easily turn them back on. So once you've gone through your add-ons, you can click OK. And it'll tell you that for the changes to take effect, you need to restart the Explorer, which we don't need to do right at the moment. And then click on Advanced. And Restore Advanced Settings is the best way to go. It, all these settings in here, unless you're a techie, they're, they're probably just going to confuse you, and we don't have an hour to go through them all. So... Um, just restore advanced settings and you can also reset Internet Explorer settings in one click but that will disable your toolbars, uh, delete your web history, your web form information and your passwords and um, I've got some saved passwords and stuff that I don't want deleted so I don't use that feature. Okay so once you've gone through all that hit apply, hit OK and restart your browser.